Welcome to this bite-sized, memorable look at the world around us. I'm Jim from Nature's Work. The Alps are home to a staggering 600 truly alpine species. They're able to survive and thrive above the natural tree line and are at home in the harsh mountain environment with extremes of temperature, strong sunlight and exposure to the drying and damaging effects of strong winds. Their ability to endure these extreme conditions, to survive, grow and reproduce make them very special. In this illustrated and generalised diagram, there are distinct zones as you ascend the mountain. These altitudinal zones are dictated by the climate and each has its own range of species that thrive at each level. As you can see, aspect also has an effect due to the amount of solar radiation each side of the mountain gets. There are other descriptions and altitude bands in other books, but this is one I've drawn up from research and can be found in my book, The Alps, A Natural Companion. So let's run through the different and generalized life zones. The submontane zone is below a thousand meters. This is the natural vegetation of the foothills, consisting of deciduous woodlands of oak, beech, and birch. There's large areas of forest management, meadows, and other human impacts. A rich shade loving woodland flora exists, including many orchids, such as the one pictured here, the lady slipper orchid. Climbing up to the next zone, we've got the montane zone from 1,000 metres to around 1,500 metres. And here there are large areas of forest that have been transformed into, as you can see there, pastures and meadows. And the environment has higher rainfall and humidity, and you'll see communities of globe flower, as you can see pictured there, and other tall herbs within that community. Broadleaf trees still doing well here. Um, and as you can see in the image there, there's the the introduction of conifers, which are becoming more prominent. The next level up subalpine zone is quite a broad zone, a generalized broad zone from 1500 to 2500 meters. And it's a zone which runs up to the upper tree limit where Norway spruce and other conifers dominate. It's a highly rich flower region, a mixture of mountain and alpine species. There are large herbs and shrubs mixing with fragments of woodland as well. So it's, it's a really diverse and broad habitat. A really interesting phenomenon anywhere in the world is this uh, concept of the natural tree line. And it's a significant threshold for uh, plant life. Uh, there's a dramatic and an abrupt change in life form from the dominance of the, the trees to more herbaceous or, or more perennial plants um, and non-woody plants. And there's an ability, it's where smaller low growing alpine flowers seem to dominate, whereas the, the taller trees just don't have an ability to continue climbing and growing higher up. And there's a couple of theories to do with that. And it's not fully understood why there's a sudden decline in the tree survival. A range of factors exist due to climatic stress and reproductive difficulties. And there's a theory that's come about called growth limitation. And here it's where the, the trees lose their ability to convert materials made from the sun's energy through photosynthesis into new plant material. A bit like a builder having all the building blocks he needs to build the house, but it's just too cold or just too stressful for them to be built and put together for the builder to work. So above that, we have the alpine zone from 2,500 meters to around 3,200. And it's characterized by highly adapted alpine specialists. The soil's not fully formed, water's scarce, and the climatic stresses increase rapidly. So the plants, that do well here are able to forage minerals through a well-developed root system and to eke out the, the, the meagre rations that you find and amongst the, the broken screes and rocks. And then the higher alpine zone, the top alpine zone, it's above 3,200 meters, forming the absolute limit for where life can survive. Only a few higher plants, flowering plants survive and can tolerate the exposure and the lack of soil here but it's the domain of the true alpine specialist, the spore bearing plants, the lichen and the moss, otherwise known as cryptogams. 
And as you can see in that photo there, the black surface is, is the lichen and got the green splashes of lichen as well there. And they're the true pioneers able to survive the desolation. They're drought tolerant and they form this thin crust of life. The spores get carried around far and wide by the, the, the mountain winds. And then they colonize other inhospitable places. So they are really the, the true specialists. But in terms of flowers, the, one of the true specialists is the purple saxifrage and it holds the high altitude record in the Alps growing at 4,400 metres in the Michevelle region of the Swiss Alps on a, on a mountain called the Dom. If you'd like to know more, why not join me on a course in the Swiss Alps? Alternatively, you could purchase my book, The Alps, A Natural Companion. Just go to my website at natureswork.co.uk where there's also a range of nature-based playing cards available.